Well, hello, my name is Jason Crowley, and I'm the winemaker at Chateau Morissette Winery here in Floyd, Virginia. And I was going to talk to you briefly today about how our white wines and red wines are made. Our grapes are the source for wine that we make here at Chateau Morissette, and that starts out during harvest in the fall after we monitor the fruit and determine when the fruit is ripe based on flavor and chemistries. We then work with the grower to pick the fruit and deliver it here to the winery. Uh, the fruit can show up on the crush pad. We're going to evaluate it and then de-stem it and load it into our press. We have a five ton and a 20 ton press. Now white wines, we're going to press the, the white fruit, collect that juice and pump it into a stainless steel tank like what you see here beside me and behind me. And once the juice is in those tanks, we're going to ferment it uh, white wines are going to ferment at cool temperatures to try to preserve a lot of the fresh and fruity aromatics that are in white wines. And after a cool fermentation that lasts a couple weeks, we are then going to settle the wine once all the sugar has been converted into alcohol and it's actually wine. We're going to settle the wine at this point and then begin the process of clarifying, blending and stabilizing our wines. And right here what we have, you see the ice on this tank. This uh, the wine in this tank is Our Dog Blue. That's a blend of Riesling and Traminet. And this is a final blend, well after harvest now, and we are in a process where we're stabilizing the wine. Wines have acids in them that can precipitate out, and although it's a harmless precipitate, we don't like to have chunks of things in our wine. So we force that precipitation to happen in tank as part of our stabilizing process, so we can deliver you a completely clear and stable product. Um, and So Our Dog Blue is a blend of Riesling and Treminet. It's a completely stainless steel wine, meaning that this wine is fermented only in stainless steel. It's not going to have any oak influence on it, so it's going to be made in a style that's much more fresh and fruity, uh, and going to have a lot more fruity aromatics that are going to contribute uh, to the uh, quality of the wine. This is a semi-sweet wine, so it's around 3% residual sugar, and that residual sugar is going to pair and accompany with a lot of different spicy foods or strong cheeses. It's also going to make it a real easy-going wine that one can just enjoy chilled on a hot summer day, just a good, great patio sipper. So an all-around uh, great, great blend. Refreshing. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our red wine making process. Red fruit starts obviously out in the vineyard, and once we've determined that the fruit has reached an optimal ripeness and flavor development, we're going to bring that fruit to the winery and process it. Unlike with white wines where you separate the juice and the skins before fermenting, with red grapes we remove the berries from the stems, crush the fruit up together with the juice, and pump all of that into a tank. And with red fermentations, we want to ferment on the skins because we extract the flavors and color that was red wine is known for from the skins. And when the wine is fer when the juice is fermenting, the yeast produces CO2, and those skins will raise up to the surface of the wine. And if we just allow them to sit there untouched, then we're not getting the extraction we want. Um, one of the ways that you can get that extraction is by a pump over process. And you can see at the top of these tanks, we have a lid that can be removed and actually rest on the wine when fermenting. But when we need to do a pump over process, we'll drain fermenting juice from the bottom of the tank, use a hose and a nozzle, and irrigate the top of the, the fermentation, extracting all the color and flavor compounds and tannins from the grape skins that we want to. And so we'll do that um, during fermentation a few times a day. And that's where you get the extraction from the, the grape skins into the, grape, into the wine, making it red like this uh, sample here. Um, after we've determined the fermentation is finished, the cap has fallen back down into the wine, we are going to drain the wine out of these tanks. And that's when we separate the juice, or the wine at this point, from the berries. We'll drain the wine from the, from the berries. We'll, dig the, we'll actually crawl up inside of these tanks and dig the fruit out and put that into the press. 
and extract the rest of the wine from the fruit that's remaining. And once it goes into a tank after that process, we'll do something called malolactic fermentation, which is a flavor development stabilizing and um, acid softening process that a wine goes through. And so after that, we're going to put our wine into barrels. We use an assortment of new and old French and American oak with a little bit of Hungarian oak mixed in there. And after a wine has finished the fermentation and we're going to be going to oak, we'll decide on what the blend is or what the variety is and what its plan is. And at that point, we'll determine if it's going to have how much percent new oak versus old oak, if it's going to be American oak versus French oak. And once we've determined that, we'll pump the, make any adjustments to the wine that we might need to to help it through its aging process. And then we're going to move the wine from tank using a pump into the barrels. And once they're aging in the barrels, we're going to lay them to rest. We're going to top them up monthly because there's some amount of wine that's lost to evaporation through the oak, even though it's completely sealed. But uh, we'll do this topping process. And over the course of anywhere from 9 to 18 months, depending upon the wine um, or the program that it's destined for, will age in these barrels. And upon the completion of that aging process, depending upon what the blend is, we'll select our favorite barrels and either make our blends or make our varietal wines out of that. Um, and one of the blends that y'all being enjoying is the Black Dog. And that's a blend of one of our great varieties, Chamberson, and then also Petit Verdot, Merlot, Cab Franc, and Cab Sav. Delicious. Uh, Black Dog is a semi-sweet, semi-dry red wine. It's very fruity, smooth, not extremely tannic. So it's a rather all-purpose, um, anytime kind of wine. It go, pairs well with a, lot of, with a variety of red meat dishes, but it's also great lightly chilled or just enjoying with company on the patio um, at any time of the year. So it's, it's a great company wine and uh, one of our original favorites here at Chateau Morissette. Uh, Chateau Morissette was founded by my parents in 1978. Um, we're actually the oldest winery in the state of Virginia. Um, we, the original winery was a cellar cave they blasted underground at our home. Um, we realized nobody would find it, so we moved to the current site where we are. And uh, we now, in 1999, we built uh, this beautiful tim salvage timber frame building, which is the largest salvage timber frame building in America. And we, um, we are really proud of that and the fact that no trees were cut down. The, the winery has, has a capacity of about 200,000 gallons. Um, and we make a bunch of different varieties of wines. We, because of our location, uh, certain varieties of grapes won't grow here. And we have to, so we have different vineyards throughout the state. We have 10 different growers. And between the grapes we have here and at their locations, we have about 250 acres of grapes for, for our production of wine. And our cider also, which is a new product for us. Well, this is our Black Dog wine. This is uh, named after our, my first Black Lab that I had when I got out of college, named Hans. And we realized the winery, you needed a, a, a marketing image and we created the dog theme and it's just been a tremendous hit from the get-go, and um, we're known as the dog winery all over the East Coast. Um, the Black Dog, well, it was our first dog wine, and it's a blend of Cabernet Merlot and Cabernet Franc. It's more of a Bordeaux style. It's got just a touch of sugar, because we initially created it for people who said they didn't like red wines, because they were sour or tannin, if they knew the right language. And because of that, we added like 0.5% residual sugar and it took the bite off of it and turned people who normally said they didn't drink red wines into, into red wine drinkers. And um, it's got a beautiful color. It's uh, aged in American oak for, um, for about a year. And then it's uh, taken out and then we bottle it and age it in the bottle for about a year. Well, this is our blackberry wine. We uh, have a whole series of wine called Orchard Series, and we produce these wines for several reasons. Um, they're, they're more, they work, go great with the farm-to-table theme, 
because um, a lot of the fruits are from local local uh, farmers. But we also, the millennials like to try something different than what their parents were drinking. And so these are new products that aren't really widespread distribution. Um, we're working on that and it's working very well, but um, it's make, make, they're just really unique products. And then this is the blackberry. It's really got a beautiful color to it. And the thing with the, even though these are sweet, they don't taste, they don't have the, a sweet taste like cough syrup at all. They have a great natural, nice balance to them with the acidity. And they're actually really beautiful wines and we're really proud of them. We're celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, which is quite a milestone for us. And we're also um, believe that we're the only third generation winery in Virginia. And that's, that's quite a feat in itself. And um, so, and I have a lot of kids. And so seven of them are working here now currently, and um, customers love to be able to see and talk, talk with the Marset family. So it's been, that's just worked out great. This is our Sweet Mountain Apple, which is one of the part of our Orchard Series wine. Uh, we're really proud of it. It's made, a, it's made from an orchard about eight miles from here, uh, from friends we've known for about 50 years. So it's a great collaboration of how the wine, the wine industry is helping to make uh, a ripple effect in the agricultural economy. So it's, it's sweet, but it's not syrupy sweet. It's got a great flavor to it and um, got a great color. Um, it's, it's fermented and aged in stainless steels, which keeps it light and crisp, and we, uh, we serve, it, serve it chilled. This is our wine that we call Our Dog Blue. It uh, is a blend of Riesling uh, with um, Terminette, and we produced this wine long ago when Riesling wasn't a popular grape back then, and so we changed the name and Riesling's were typically, typically in green or brown bottles. We put it in the blue bottle and sales went from 2,000 cases to 35,000 cases in a year and a half. And um, so it just exploded out on the market. Um, it's a very, it's a typical Rheingau style wine. wine. It's about 3% residual sugar. Um, it's got a great aromatics to it and um, serve chilled and it's, it's popular for a, many, a lot of Italian dishes and also Chinese, but it's just a, a great, great wine for every day also.